Hey guys, Brian with the Ball Guy Sci, and in this episode, we were looking at Google Slides, and we're going to talk about how you could build an interactive map type project with your students or have them do it. Let's jump in. All right, so my last video, I talked about linking things and using shapes and all that stuff. We're gonna build on that today. But if you are a social studies teacher or wanna you know, kind of take a look at how you can build a virtual museum, uh, go ahead and check that video out right there. But the concepts are pretty similar. I'm just gonna tie it in in a little different way. So the first thing that I wanna show you is I put a background map in. Now, I'm a science teacher and I love this idea of biodiversity and issues with the environment. I mean, kind of talking through some of those, it just gets at the the emotions and that gets at the motivation so so if you right click and, and you go to change the background you get this thing right here and you click choose image and then up at the top I'm gonna type in earth map um, well let's do earth habitat I think that's how I found it so uh, there's a map down here somewhere it's the one I've already got pasted in there I think this is it right here where it talks about the biodiversity uh, hotspots all over the globe where things are just radically different there, okay? So um, I would click that and it's gonna say, okay, insert it, right? So I already have it. And one thing you don't wanna do is add it to the theme because you only want it to be the background on this particular page. So I'm just gonna hit done. Now on this particular page, what I want is I want students to be able to find an area. Like for me, Madagascar and the Indian Ocean Islands. Maybe that's the area I want to highlight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called an image map. This is basically how the internet kind of went from boring gopher stuff. If you're as old as I do and know what the heck that means, uh, I was blinking cursor on a green monitor to what we have now, which is this awesome image driven GUI interface, right? So here's how it works. You're just going to go up here and I'm going to grab this um, line tool. Now mine says polyline because that's the tool I've been using. But if you click the arrow next to it and you drop down to polyline, you're basically going to be able to draw an irregular polygon of whatever shape and size you want. So uh, I'm going to click on that. Now, one quick thing is you do need to connect them all the way around and close up any gaps. So I'm just going to click around and it may be hard for you to see. I'm going to make sure I get my words as well because this is going to become a link and then I'm going to hover over and as soon as you get it to change color like that and fill, you're rocking and ready to roll. The problem here is it's covering up all my stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the paint bucket. Now, I'm not looking for a solid color or a gradient. I'm looking for a custom color because when you click on custom, you get this transparency down here. So let's say that for the Madagascar Islands, I, I wanna choose this uh, darker red color and then I want to drop the transparency down to somewhere maybe around 20 to 30 percent and hit OK and I can take a look at it. it's pretty good so I have this box now drawn around the shape drawn around the Madagascar Islands and the the ocean uh, Indian Ocean Islands that are nearby that is going to be linked to another slide now, in my last video, I actually used this um, ring-tailed lemur, and you can see it open here in the Explore tab, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, this ring-tailed lemur as a virtual zoo or exhibit museum type build. Well, we're not gonna build that this time, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that interactive uh, guy right here, this slide, which say is about the ring-tailed lemur. We might tie that in a minute. But we're gonna look at the Madagascar um, and Indian Islands. So I'm going to go up here. I'm going to type in Madagascar. Whoops. Madagascar. And I don't want the movie. So I'm going to get a bunch of stuff about the movie probably. So I'm going to type in biodiversity just because, hey, good research is good research. So now it's giving me stuff from the web, images, right? Drive. If I have already done the research, it'll be in my Google Drive. So let's say I want to build another slide that uses this information about Madagascar. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to insert a new slide. I'm just going to pick blank because there's a really cool feature I showed in the last video that, that I'm going to show you again. So let's say um, I'm going to grab this guy right here and you can click on it to get a preview. 
and then you can insert it, which is fine. But if you saw that little plus button, you can insert it there. I'm gonna do something a little bit nutty. Not really. I'm gonna close this out and then I'm gonna click the explore button again. And if you didn't know where it was, there it is. It's down in the lower right. But this time when I click it, it's giving me layout options, which is pretty cool. I can get maybe this frame or a texture on the left. Uh, and so there are different layouts that I can use. I actually want it in the background, so I'm gonna turn it into what's called a full bleed image. And then maybe I wanna go back and I wanna type in Madagascar animals. Maybe I wanna I don't know why I keep spelling that wrong. There we go. Luckily, it corrects it for me. And I'm gonna go to images. Now the ring-tailed lemur is gonna be one that's gonna come right up, right? It's what everybody probably thinks of. So I'm gonna go ahead and click the plus sign this time just to insert that in there. It's gonna put that in there. And now what I wanna do is I wanna double click on it. And it gives me these like handles, right? So now I kinda wanna keep what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm cropping the image down to just what I want. It's going to move it over. That's not what I wanted to do. So I'm going to shrink this down and I'm going to get just the part that I'm looking for. Now it does give me a little bit of context here um, about the type of vegetation that it's on, the animal. But when I click away, it's going to be pretty good as far as getting that in there. And so now I can shrink this down, but I've cropped it. So I could put maybe this over here and I can link this slide now to an informational slide. Maybe I want to put that down here. Um, so students basically could build out all of the things that are in this environment and then link them to information about them. So maybe you're doing one on Madagascar and this is my job to come up with three animals, uh, three plants and one issue that might be found in this environmental area. So when I click on it now, I can link this just like I did in the other slide to more information. So basically you're creating a map. The map leads to an area that each student is responsible for. But in there, students are doing the exact same thing. They're saying, okay, well, here's a lemur. So I go up and I insert a link. I want that link maybe not to go directly to where I got that image and I'm gonna drop down and go to my ring-tailed lemur slide and hit apply now when I go to present mode then a student goes in hey they're looking at this I'm gonna go and they get more information about my ring-tailed lemur okay now there's another way that I can do this which is once I get here I probably want this to go back to that same slide that I had right over here so this one is already linked from my last video, but I'm gonna go ahead and change that. So I'm gonna click on this arrow. I had to move it a little bit to get it out of the way and I'm gonna edit that link. Um, I'm gonna cancel that and we're gonna take it to slide number 10. I'm gonna hit apply and I'm gonna move that down. So slide number 10 for me is the map. And if I click on that, it'll take me back to the map. Maybe a better way to do that is to take me to slide 11, which is this one. So then if there was something else on this page, you follow the same process. So basically what kids are doing is they're building out whatever you want. So we use shape to highlight an area. We link the shape to an image. That image, we put something in the background. The kids create as many layers as you want to make this work. And then you just share with students and they can learn from one another. So I'm gonna use this as a virtual gallery walk. So I might share this presentation out with students have them go through it and then after each student's work or at the bottom uh, I convert this to Pear Deck and put in a gallery walk so hey I like I wonder I notice I wonder and have students fill that out and then provide that feedback to their classmates uh, if you're not really sure about how Pear Deck works or their add-ons uh, go ahead and click this playlist I'll link right up there for Pear Deck really awesome way to do it there's a couple other ways you can do it as well with comments and stuff like that I think that's probably the best way so I hope that was helpful I, i'm just curious like what are you gonna make and if you make something share it with me i'd love to see it and also hey share this video with somebody you think could benefit from it and we will catch you in the next one